All right, so I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Alana Lemon. Uh, she is an entrepreneur and she writes about the love in her life. Each experience she's faced has shown her strength, character, and courage. She's born and raised in Maryland. She did not pursue a college degree and she preferred to uh, follow her own dreams instead of becoming a writer and a poet. She said this role wasn't easy, but determination, uh, meditation, and positive thinking allowed her to reach her goals. She's also the author of two published books. The first, Train Yourself How to Treat Yourself, which you can purchase on Amazon. And the, F the next book, Failure is Success. So, without further ado, let's welcome to the Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to introduce the next speaker. Um, she's a I'm old school, so I do have French college. <laughs> Even though I'm young, uh, I'm still old school. Well, first I'm going to welcome each and everybody, each and every one of you for coming. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, a background, a little bit, uh, and most of it. Right. A short story about how I started blogging and an overview of my talk. I am a motivational speaker, a novelist, a blogger, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, and a mom. That's the best job ever. In 2012, I started blogging and WordPress. One year after my daughter passed away, on May 2nd, 2011, I fell asleep breastfeeding and she suffered. So I thought if I blog, I can have to rely on my story and also read somebody or connect with somebody who's been in the same situation I've been in. Well, that didn't happen because I had writing block. I was fighting my own demons. Depression, suicidal thoughts, um, they have been occurring, just life itself. So I had to take a moment and regroup and figure out what I need to do. So I seek help. I got a therapist, I got a psychiatrist, and I was going on this journey. So that helped me to evolve and to connect with people about my story. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to introduce the old of my mom. Well, before I do that, I have one question to ask them. Is writer's block real? Or do we use that as an excuse to depress me? And I will answer that question at the end of my talk. Okay. So now, I will give you an overview of my talk. Why would we have bloggers block? What is bloggers block? Five steps that can help bloggers stay in motion. Challenges you may face with blogging and unlocking the big secret of posting. <coughs> I'm going to open up with a quote from Count Marie. When we can't tap into our own creativity, the neurons in our brain aren't firing the way we like them to. There are approximately 86 billion neurons in the human brain. Neurons are responsible for processing information. So, why would we have bloggers block? Well, we have bloggers block because of environmental changes. Relocating, changing jobs, marriage, and even having children, mental illnesses, diseases or disorders, relationship trouble, divorce, separation, miscommunicating or time apart, increased stress, work, relationships, and parenting, and perfectionism, having or trying to do everything perfect. Most of y'all may know what is writer's block, but today I will tell you what is blogger's block. The condition of being unable to think of what to blog about or how to proceed with blogging. Now, I will tell you five steps that can help bloggers stay in motion. 
The move distractions. The move distractions mean from TV, social media, peers, and family. Anything that interferes with your life. Sometimes we have to turn off. Sometimes we have to turn off your outer sources to ignite your inner sources. Build confidence. Go back and read your previous material. That can inspire you because you're able to see how talented you are. Plus, you can always change the words in your previous piece and create a whole new one. Just write it. Maya Angelou said it best. No matter how big or small, just continue to write. Something is always better than nothing. If you write one page a day, by the end of the year, you have 365 pages. A whole year block. Done. Relax. Everyone needs me time. Time to clear your mind and regroup. Sit in your car, lock yourself in the bathroom, or schedule, or schedule a massage to relax your mind and body and soul. And movement. Movement helps. Movement helps change your mindset. You just have to move. You just have to move. It allows you to focus on something different. If you just sit down and try to create something, you're still, but once you start walking around, you're able to get your juices flowing and you calm down, you relax, and you're able to produce what you're trying to do. So next. The challenges you may face when you're posting. Well, the start is I'm going to go back to life. Well, I told you previously I lost my daughter from suffocation. Well, secondly, in 2014, December 24, 2014, I was diagnosed with missing a deficiency. That's the rare autoimmune disease that, um, well, basically, my body attacks itself thinking it's a foreign object. So my body's going to kill my all my good bacteria. So I, everybody's about to get it. I thought, well, since I have this, um, this life-altering disease, I should, have, I should be able to write something. I should have touched people's lives. Like, well, it's rare. You know, I know God. I go to the doctors. They have no idea what to talk about. I'm like, well, it's really rare. So I tried to um, sit down and blog and express how I felt, but when I, when I, um, when I was diagnosed, I was going to go back, basically. I was trying to do all the research I could do, what the medication, no medication, like, what's the life expectation of my disease? It was like 10 years, and I just lost my mind. At the time, I was 27, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm not married, I'm at a house, like, all these people are coming, I don't see my kids graduate, like, what is going on? And then when I calmed down, and I started being grateful for the time I do have and not focus on the things that I cannot change, I was able to blog in and have people lie for my story. So oh, next, not Excuse being, me. not, not, oh, okay. that point. Mm -hmm. That's good. He did not be able to see your vision. <clears throat> At the time, we cannot even see our own vision. So how can you expect somebody else to see your vision? Don't waste time on trying to prove something to somebody else. Just show yourself how great you are. And allow your actions to speak for you. Yourself. The next one. You are your greatest enemy and your biggest encouragement. You hold the key to your success. Sometimes we allow doubt, fear, failing, fear of success to get in our own way. to get in our own way of reaching our goals. Okay, now, I'm going to unlock the big secret. It's simple, you just stop posting. So. My five big secrets to posting, some people will resist these steps because they will take you out of your comfort zone. Sometimes people are used to doing things a certain way, a certain pattern, a certain time, and you lose sight of 
going to I was like that. I was like, no, I exercise this a lot. I can exercise all the time, but this a lot. That's it. You cannot tell me nothing else. That's how I'm going to do it. But then when I realized that if I miss this a lot, then I just don't miss exercising. So why don't I step up my comfort zone and if I miss this o'clock, I should change it to 6 p.m. I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do at a different time. So sometimes you have to step up your comfort zone to get things done that you need to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Count it back. I actually got that um, idea from Mel Robinson. Mel Robinson, actually. She was saying in front of well, one day, well, she said a couple months that she couldn't get out of bed. She couldn't be here a long time. So she was watching commercial on TV, and it's a natural death. And when it counts, and it counts backwards, five, four, three, two, one, she was like, hold up. This may work for me. I might be able to get out of my bed if I do this. So she actually did it, and she was able to get out of bed. So now I use the same technique, but I use it for writing. When I'm sitting at my computer, or I'm trying to write with my um, hand to pen, and I get right as well. I'm like, hey, Mona, what are we going to do? So instead of, instead of counting five, four, three, two, one, I use a higher number to make me think about it. Cause, like, it's kind of easy with five, four, one, three. Your mind will write back to whatever you're thinking about. So if you use a higher number, it makes yourself really think, well, hold up, what is that? 448, 48, what is that for that? 1,547. No, no, is that right? Yeah, yeah that is right. So it makes you really pay attention to what you're doing and it actually change your mindset. So um, I use that technique. Okay. The next one is letting it in the shower now. Oh man, this is a good one because as we become adults, we have to do adult things. Go to work and pay bills and and sometimes we, we lose sight of who we are or the things that we do like. And since I have young kids and I have older kids, um, when I get right this block, I go to my children and play with them, play with my girls, and I play Barbie, then I go to my daughter and sing songs with her, and I go downstairs and basically play, uh, what is it called, Montano. It's a new game out the kids play. Fortnite. Fortnite, there you go. Play Fortnite with my son. Even though I suck at it, but it's definitely, <laughs> it takes up my comfort zone because I'm used to being mommy. I gotta cook dinner, I gotta go to meetings, I gotta go to work, I gotta do all those things. But sometimes you have to let your child go to the playground and run around, go draw a picture, go to the music hall, go skydiving, do something that you ordinarily would not do that makes you, that will make you relax and have fun. So let you in the child know. And uh, stop playing. Stop playing your books. This should work for some planners and it should work for non planners. Well, I decided that since I'm a planner and I realized that me blogging is not working, I try to say, okay, well, I'm going to blog every single day. It does not work like that. Life happens, things happen, and I was like, okay, what can I do to make me at least blog since I'm a planner? Instead of being defeated and overwhelmed, stressed out, that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do or what I want to do in a timely manner. Well, this is what I decided to do. In my calendar, I have blogging in the box. So any time during that week, I can blog. And that, that allows me to take the pressure off of what I have to do and allow my natural juices to flow when nobody's ready to run. So everybody should be able to kind of get to that if you're planning or not planning. And um, change your writing tools. Change your writing tools is a good one. If you usually use Word, go to Google Docs. And maybe some people like, huh? What do you mean by that? But or you can go, if you're typing your paper up, instead of using time, time of moment, go to square or change the font size. You're changing the, you're changing the way your brain operates. Because your brain is used to this one set schedule, one set time, one way of doing things. And once you, once you um, change the way, thank you. <laughs> Change the way you do things, your brain is able to operate quickly. And the last one, um, change your mindset. That's the big one. Change your mindset. I have this quote on my wall. You give 
everything meaning. You, you, you're the person that gives everything meaning. So, if we make something so big and turn it into something so small, we're able to do what we can to do. Because right is black, they have this big old world, like, oh my gosh, I have a panic, I have right is I can't do this and that. But if you make right is smaller, you're able to go forward and um, do what you can do. Now I'm going back to um, the first question I asked. Is writing not real, or do we use it as an excuse for person? Well, Confucius said it best. He who believes, he can, and he who believes, he can, are both right. So he who believes, he thinks, he who believes, he thinks he has right his life is right, and he who believes, he don't think he has right his life is right. So it's up to you. If you believe you have it, you have it. If you don't believe you, if you don't have it, you won't. And
So is it worth a problem? I just want to say, I'm sorry for your loss, but the inspiration you're giving us all is tremendous. Either way, do you feel like it changes once you 
start actually breaking. No, the same way. Yeah. The same exact way. No matter if it's personal or if it's not personal. I write the same way. Um, right? But I'm supposed to write like from my own journal, I'll pack it up. Mm -hmm. And then I have any notes I added in. Then I go back in, like, mm, this don't sound right. Maybe it should go, this line should go here. And I need to move it up. But I still have my original version. I don't like, it's kind of funny. I don't like changing the order I wrote it in. But I like, copy that and I go to another one. Then I go over it. Because sometimes, you have to go back and see the original piece. Because right. you have to figure out where you started from. And then if you change that up, you don't know where you started from. And it's like I go to the other the other page and I copy and I place and I move things around. I'm like, okay, this time I might want it. I go back and compare it to you. I'm like, no, this sounds bad if I do it this way or maybe not. Have you ever used um, online publishing like with Medium or LinkedIn or anything like that? No. No? Is that an option though? What's that? Is that a good option though? Well, that's what I was, I was curious because um, I, I just heard that like, you know, there's a lot of people here, I guess, that have like websites and write on our sites and then like you can repost to Medium and then that will generate leads back to your website, but I don't know exactly how that's done, so I was just curious. Me either. Yeah. <coughs> If somebody in here may have uh, <laughs> knowledge of that, yeah. that they could share. I just find the idea of like posting online really scary. So like when you brought up the perfectionism thing, that's like really hard. But it's like for anyone here who wants to have an online presence, it's really really important. And like I don't know if anyone has that. Maybe someone can share how you conquer it. Because for me, I'm like, oh, if it's not perfect, it's if it's not perfect. I can't post it. And then it's like I keep waiting and waiting. And then it's like. It, it bothers me because then I see things that people have posted and they're really, really good on media and what have you, but they're not amazing, yet they have tons of followers and stuff. And so I'm like, why can't I just like get over myself and just put stuff out there? And I'm just wondering if anyone has that and knows any tools on how to like get over that. Because that's really... One of my things is I sometimes think you're your own worst enemy. Because you, you want perfection from yourself. And most people, to me, everything is like McDonald's generation. It's like catch the heat. You know, so people just want content. They don't care if your grammar is not proper. They don't care if it's the spell words. As long as they can understand you and they get what they want from it, they go on to the next thing, you know, a couple of minutes later. But I can connect you with my mother because I know as soon as I put something out there, she's going to say, on oh, line 23, or, you should have used it because I, I use something for emphasis. I started with a, a dot, 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 and, and I capitalized the and. She's like, you're not supposed to do that. So I just assume she's going to give me some negative feedback immediately, and then you just, you get a, like, it's coming regardless, so, and then you get a lot of positive feedback from other people, so you just got to, like, let that go, like, let your mom go. Yeah. <laughs> Brace the others. <laughs> like for me, I took uh, when I was in college, AIM was a really big thing. Oh yeah. Um, so I took a lot of time to craft my away messages, like the little profile you put, so, or any just the away messages in themselves too. But I would write it much like Alana said. You you write what you want to write, and as you get to the end is usually when I go back and I start seeing stuff, or like like you said, writing notes and putting that on the side. Not so much for the AIM messages, but in general. But, but uh, I spent a lot of time rewriting or rereading things, because I am a perfectionist too, because I want to put out the best product. Right. It's not necessarily that I need everyone to look at me or by any means, I just want to do my best. So I think what Alana said was like definitely going all the way through and not changing, like for the first part, like writing what you're going to write and then going back and taking a step back and looking at it is how I usually do it, but I don't post it as much for the same reason, just because I don't want to be like out there just posting a bunch of stuff and then come back later like, oh, well, that was garbage. Why right. don't I do that? Right. So. Well, one thing I did, I wrote a post recently that I was really, uh, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, but I wanted to make sure it was perfect. And so I wrote it and I'm going to put it on my MailChimp email thing and I'm going to put it 
it on my blog. So I wrote it in both platforms, and I read it on my phone one night, and I noticed like the simplest of like typos and little things. And like, I think reading it in a different platform like made me see it in a different way. And so I go back and edit it on different platforms, and that helps. Like read it on the phone, read it on the computer. Hold on, okay. I'm gonna go back and answer your question for the fashion. It's kind of funny you say that I am a perfectionist. When, a, when I'm writing, you're going to see my, like, you look at my journal, and I write something down, and it's not written the way I want it to be written. I will do it again. I will pick up, uh, <laughs> no, I will pick up after I wrote it again. Because then I do it again, I'm like, if it's not right. And then sometimes I had, I had to stop. If I keep doing that, I'm not going to get nothing done. So you have to believe in yourself. Your work is good. If you wrote it, somebody out there will be dying to hear or read what, you read, read what you're saying. You don't know who might be getting attacked from the words you're writing. If you never post it, nobody will ever say it. True. Like honestly, most of the best information are in gray sites. Most people die with all the important things. They never decided, they never decided to write that book, or they never decided to travel, or they never decided to be that teacher, or that basketball player, any of, of, any of those things. So I, well, my suggestion is for you to still post, regardless of if it's perfect, perfect or not, because you'll never have nothing done. You'll never have nothing else in life. Just keep going. I started out as a dresser designer, and one of the things I love about the web, as opposed to print, and in print, it's John, it's printing. He could never fix it. If you write something in a blog, you've got the wrong word, you want to change the sentence, you can change it. It's never written in stuff. So there's two extremes. Um, does anyone know number one blogger that's really great, supposedly? Of course, she's famous. Does anyone know who it is? It's um, Paltrow Goop. That's number one. Number two, believe it or not, is Donald Trump's daughter. Okay. But th those are like famous. But it's interesting, one of the worst bloggers, I don't remember his name, has the most followers. Unfortunately, my girlfriend's a famous writer. But I can't remember his name. He writes horribly. He has more followers than anyone. It's amazing. And he goes on all these trips around the world and goes to hotels, everything for free. He writes horribly. horribly. And yet he has more followers. Than, so it's very interesting. You don't probably have to be the best writer. Just get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
I look at people's lives and that messes up with you. Like, how can you compare your life with somebody else's? You're not that person. Y'all have all different walks. All different things happen. So focus on you. What do you need to do for you? That's all that matters. Stay in your grass. Stay in your lane. Stay in your yard. It's okay to look over. Like, oh, the grass is looking good over there. I might be cut mine, but if you're cool, if your grass is not being cut, cool. That grass needs to be tailored. Let them tailor their grass. Just focus on you. Don't focus on negative people because you know to get them done if you look at people that are happy to do it success. Mm -hmm. And someone told me once, like, you can compare yourself to others all your life because you're just driving yourself crazy. You should only compare yourself to you and you have to But, like, you, look at yourself, you compare yourself to your own person. And a lot of the people you might think have their stuff together, they don't. <laughs> 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 Says they were an author was actually an author. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another thing. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because we are looking on social media, most times the, those are still images. Anybody can post for a picture and make everything look pretty and that everybody's happy, but you go inside the house, it's turmoil. Children cuss them out. The, the husband not home. It's like so much stuff going on, but when you're looking just at the picture, like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. Anybody can smell a picture, I'm like, come on, let's see cheese. And you're like, right, right. And they were like, oh. They look good, they look almost like they're having fun, but no, they're not having fun. You just you just stop and smile for what you what's I'm told to do. I'm a photographer. That's what I do. And I I, I shoot these vloggers. They literally they act like they even go like this and they put it down. They want to be it. They just have to take the <laughs> <they're not> <laughs> They, they get the free hotels and take pictures the whole time. I don't even want to stay here tonight. And they go on. Oh my goodness. And, oh my and it's all not to say put out junk. It's just there's a point at which you have to say, okay, this is, this is it. And it's cool. Mm -hmm. you know. So I'm a, a dyslexic full time content creator a colorblind photographer, and I was bullied my entire childhood. So I have three things fighting against me. And I, I landed a job where I create content, literally full time, every day. There are two tools I can tell you that will help you with the writing stuff. One is Grammarly. It's a paid service. Fantastic for all those little things that you're going to wind up missing that everybody makes, misses because they're human. Um, as a dyslexic writer, that's my best friend right there, um, Hemingway, is great if you want, if you think your content might be too, uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to say grown up. Hemingway will help you simplify it so that it's, uh, yeah, dumbed down but still, still professional, right? It'll help you simplify things. Um, and uh, one piece of advice that I can give you, which I think anyone who creates content will agree, the, uh, and I wrote about, uh, on my own blog, I wrote a uh, really long article about these three things that are against me. And that was the hardest piece I've ever written. And the one thing that will make your content perfect is hitting that publish button. But if you don't hit that publish button, it's never going to be perfect. Perfect is, is wherever you publish. And it'll evolve over time. So. Did my presentation help any of y'all? Oh, yeah. It really did. Yeah. I know, I'm not saying much, but um, I got a, I got a lot out of it. You know, I'm just I'm kind of not as expert in it. This has been my favorite so far. So and thank you for um, quoting Mel Robbins, by the way, because I love her too. You're welcome. You don't have any experts to speak. It's kind of funny. I'm up here. I'm an introvert. It's kind of funny, but. I had to um, basically take myself out of the equation and figure out what's my why. My purpose is to impact people's lives from my story and from positivity. So I can't be in the background 
I'm not going to get nowhere. If I'm supposed to speak to y'all, I have to step out of my comfort zone, take myself out of the equation, and get up here. You got to put all the things aside if you're going where you're trying to go. So that's what I decided to do. Like, okay, Ryan, this might be scary, but who don't get nervous? Everybody get nervous. You go to a job with me, your first date, the 20th, the 25th anniversary, like all these things, you get nervous in. So still speak. You never know who you can, who you can impact from saying something. Everybody's voice is important. Every single person has something to say. And you never know that one statement you might say can spark somebody else's ideas over here. And they're like, wow, I never think of that. I can't have all, I can't have all ideas. I just can't. I can talk about some things, but sometimes you need help with somebody else. Thank you for being so sincere and honest, and I'm very moved. Um, do you meditate at all? Because you mentioned, I'm just wondering if you pause or meditate. Actually, I do. It's kind of funny. Like I said, I stop um, looking at social media. I don't watch no TV. I don't do nothing. When I wake up in the morning, I, um, I pray, and then I turn on meditation, and I sit in silence. And then I listen to motivational speakers. Because if I want to get my day started, I have to listen to positive people to do positive things. And if I want to be a motivational speaker, you should do the things that motivational speakers do. Who do you listen to? Oh, man, I listen to everybody. I love Les Brown. I love um, Les Brown. That's, that's my favorite. I like Iggy Johnson. I like um, Eric, Eric Thomas. Um, it's a lot more, um, what is his name? Tom B. Um, Gary B. Um, Tony Robbins. I listen to a lot of people. Like, I don't care who it is. If you're speaking, I want to hear it. I'm open. I'd rather be open to anything because you never know where you can find inspiration or um, they're basically find inspiration, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yes? Do you join any um, sort of campaigns? Like uh, a couple years ago, I was on the 30 days in October, 31 days of blogging, blog a day kind of thing. Do you have any? other bloggers you recommend or who you follow or do you join any campaigns uh, to be more consistent with your blogging? Actually, I don't. I have no, I'm glad you said that. I think I'm going to go home and do that too. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't. That's, that's a, a very good question. I really don't have any bloggers I follow, but that makes sense. If I had a blogging convention, I should have some bloggers I do follow. What's your, um, I'm sorry I was a little late, your consistency, like, uh, every, do you try to put it out at the same time every day? Or? No. At first, I tried to do that, and I was getting overwhelmed and frustrated. I felt like quitting when I was trying to, okay, well, you got to write today, you got to do it today, you got to do it today, come on, come on. And it wasn't like my thoughts wasn't coming. I couldn't produce as fast as I wanted to, so I decided to write them out on my calendar book a week, like, you, you block out a week, and you say, one of these days I'm going to walk, and that's what I do. If I don't, I don't. I don't want to put no pressure on myself. I want to give all my, my um, bloggers, all my readers, something positive for me. And when I give you rush, you, you want to get a rush job, you're like, okay, this is good content, but she's not really speaking to me right now. I want to speak to them. I want to let them know, like, if you, like, you go to my, um, my YouTube channel, it's kind of funny. I don't care how I look. I mean, honestly, I don't care how I look. I don't care what time it is. I give you the real me. I let you know how I feel at that moment. Because if I wait any longer, you're not going to see the real me. You're going to see the dead up me, the, the one that, okay, I was mad right now, but now I'm going to talk about me being mad, but I'm not mad no more. You're not going to get the, the, the full effects of how I really work, how, how I really feel. I have a question. Anything I should work on? Because <laughs> I'm always open for suggestions. I'm always in to improving. Improving helps you grow. Uh, I, I did a lot of public speaking in the past. And one thing I know is when you practice at home, it always seems like it takes longer. It goes <laughs> much faster than you get public speaking. Right, right. okay. It's so funny you say that. Because I was at home like, okay, what are you going to say this? You got this? Walking around like, yeah, I got this. Go, what are you going to say this? <laughs> I'm doing it over and over again, okay? I'm my brother, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, hold on, it's 
take the time with my so fast. Like, I had time, like, I'm going to say it slower. And then one thing I'm like, okay. Yeah, so I was for a little extra. And sometimes you just take breaks, you know, just take it easy. Ask a question in between. That way you can get interaction. If I get interaction, the past the time. <laughs> How often do you do this? Um, public speaking on campus? Um, anytime I can. I pop off all I'm speaking of. I'm open to anything. Anything that time I want to speak, I'm popping. I'm open to speaking on anything, anytime, anyways. If I want to pack people lives, I have to pack people lives no matter what situation, you know, any space, any time. Well, if that's your goal, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you say positive? Oh, that's a great question. How do I stay positive? <laughs> Honestly, player. And when I, okay, I'll put it this way. Before I go anywhere, when I get in my car, I pray for protection and on my car. I like to say, um, God, can you protect my eyes, my hands, my feet, my brakes, my tires, the cars around me, the weather, and my vehicle. So I, I pray for myself and people around me too. I want everybody to be safe. Um, it's just not about me. So basically, how I look at things, I believe everybody is connected. Everybody can impact everybody. Everybody needs everybody. So if I do not want to pray for me, the world will be a better place if I pray for you too. And then another thing I said, how I say positive, not taking things personal. That's the biggest one. No matter where you go, no matter who you come in contact with, everybody runs to everybody, honestly. And um, when somebody comes to you with a negative attitude or a negative energy, and you know that you did not do nothing wrong, don't take it personal. All you do is remain you, stay calm. Even though sometimes people do push your buttons, you be like, oh, what? Huh? Push it. You're like, oh, no, 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 that's not, no, no, we need to go there. No, 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 we need to calm down. Like, I didn't even do nothing to them. And once you stay yourself, you stay grounded. Usually a person can't really bust with you if you're not busting back at them. They won't even have to change their attitude or walk away or you walk away. So I just man, pray, meditate, deep breaths. Honestly, um, 